cell complex is already in uh, clinical trials and uh, we know we heard the name of cisplatin i hope uh, the pg students they already uh, learned about the cisplatin which is uh, being used in uh, cancer treatment so there are many metal complexes they have many important uh, application in drug discovery and in drug applications and then they can be used in different analytical and diagnostic purposes also in biological systems so today we have a promising and very young scientist professor suman mukhopadhyay Uh, who is working dedicatedly on it, and we'll discuss more in detail. Before going to the presentation session, I will extend this uh, for our departmental introduction. Actually, uh, Swan sir already asked about this, so I will say few words about this because uh, we have in our department we have twelve regular faculty members, and uh, now we are running three major DST projects of more than one point two crore, and we have many sophisticated instruments in our lab like. Double S, GC, EBV, spirometer, TCSPC, digital viscometer, photocatalytic bath, and BODCD, laminar air flow, and many more. And uh, also, I will request everyone: if anyone needs any kind of uh, collaboration, any kind of facilities, please approach to us. So this is all about uh, our department. Uh, thank you, thank you all, thank you, Professor Mukhopadhyay. Now over to Kishore. Kishore, please. Thank you, Rupamda. Now I'd like to. introduce professor sumon mukhopadhyay so professor sumon mukhopadhyay he has completed his bsc and msc from kollani university and phd from iscs and there he has carried out his postdoctoral research work in national university of singapore he has also received fct postdoctoral fellowship um, and he has carried out his research work in this fct postdoctoral fellowship in portugal and also received medicuri international incoming postdoctoral fellowship uh, and he was carried out this work in switzerland and after after enjoying all this fellowship he has started to serve in iit indore from 2010 as an assistant professor and now he is professor in chemistry in department of chemistry at iit in those his current research work is focused on metal mediated organic synthesis and inorganic pharmaceutical so with all these i would like to request professor mukhopadhyay to deliver his valuable lecture okay <clears throat> thank you very much uh, to everyone uh, to professor pandey and professor ghosh for updating me about this adamas knowledge city and also thank you to dr sen and uh, dr bhattacharya for more more information regarding the department of chemistry and my introduction so i try to share my screen first and then i will start uh, talking about my uh, uh, topic today so please let me know if you can see my screen yes it yeah, is visible. visible okay fine so i have gone into full screen mode is it okay is it visible no the full screen is not visible till now oh i don't know uh, not working no sometime it keeps problem so maybe i can try to share the whole screen maybe i don't know yes i think uh, yeah. sharing the whole screen and do the full uh, yes. screen mode yes uh, yes okay. i think that will be better i think if we go for a single window sometime it does not work mm -hmm. right. yeah so let me know if it is available in full screen mode yes, yes. now it's available okay good okay. good okay fine and the slides are moving yeah 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 okay yeah. good so good morning everybody again uh today i am going to talk about uh, a bit of metal uh, application of metal complexes in medical applications um as there are many pg students uh, who are attending this lectures lecture so i kept it in general i have not going into very deep into any particular topic but just i want to give a kind of a cursory glance that what are the different areas where the inorganic chemist basically who used to work with metal compounds uh, are working uh, to contribute in the field of medical uh, or biological applications so uh, to start with um, 
just a moment yes uh, so the importance of metal ions in biology uh, apart from the fact that our main body structure is made up of calcium uh, it was understood when it was discovered that there are various metalloproteins and metalloenzymes uh, present in our body. Uh, proteins we mostly know, those are organic compounds made up of peptides. And peptides are basically made up of some essential amino acids, alpha amino acids present in our body through the peptidic bond. They are joined together, give peptide and many peptides join together to give a protein. And these proteins, they have some kind of uh, donor center in terms of nitrogen, oxygen, or sulfur, which can be uh, very, very crucial to get attached to the metal ions. And then it can use these uh, this, uh, um, uh, the properties of the metal ions to bring about certain biologically important function inside our body. So metalloproteins are like that. Uh, they are proteins and they are bound by at least one metal ion. And if you go further, uh, you can find that these metalloproteins, what kind of role they used to play is that they used to uh, play an important role in redox reaction, in electron transport within the body, and sometimes it is help us to um, get the small molecules activated inside the body. So um, I may try to turn off these things. I don't know. Hide the. Are you getting my uh, video stream also? No, um, not no, no. You are you are looking only the full screen presentation only. Yes, yes. yes. Now okay, it's... then that's fine. Is it? Then it's fine. Nothing is hindering the view. No, because some panel is there in my screen. I don't know whether you are seeing those panels also. No. No. no? Okay. No, fine. no, no. Panel is not present. Yet. Okay. Fine. Fine. Then uh, to talk about a metal enzymes, enzymes we know they are biological catalysts and metal enzymes are basically enzyme proteins which is containing metal ions. And uh, this is called metal cofactors. And these are directly bound to the protein or to enzyme bound non-protein. And this, part, this particular part is called as prosthetic groups. And these metalloenzymes are very, very important in different catalytic reactions inside the body. One very common example is the uh, carbonic anhydrase enzyme, which contains a zinc ion. And the role of zinc ion here is to activate the carbon dioxide, which is getting produced inside the cell and to hydrolyze it to get bicarbonate and bring it back to the lungs so that it can be thrown out uh, during the respiration process. And why it is important is that, uh, you know, carbon dioxide is a non-polar molecule. It's a, um, a linear molecule and it's non-polar in nature. So it is not really directly can get dissolved in bloodstream, which is basically made up of water, which is a polar solvent. So to make it soluble in the bloodstream and then carry it back to the lungs, you require it, the body requires some kind of uh, hydrolysis of the carbon dioxide to bicarbonate. And these hydrolysis are carried out by the zinc containing enzyme, which is called carbonic anhydrase. And that really helps uh, to um, make it bicarbonate and bring it back to the lungs and all. So a lot of metalloenzymes are um, discovered one by one. This happens almost maybe about 50, 60 years ago and all. Even then right now, uh, some more enzymes are getting, sometimes it is not, con it is confusing whether it acts as an enzyme or it is just a metalloprotein, but some new informations are coming up that sometimes in particular, some reaction, there is the role of this 
metalloprotein as an enzyme that could be also possible. Now, what happened is that from this information, uh, inorganic chemists basically, they were thinking that whether these metal ions, which are working as metalloenzymes, in, in metalloenzymes, some biological reactions, which are very, very important. So whether that can be utilized to work as drug molecules. So a lot of uh, discoveries have happened in last 50, 60 years or so. And it has been found that there are some specific area where metal complexes can really act as a drug molecule and it can really contribute a lot in those areas. The first one, uh, definitely it is the anti-cancer agent. And there are a uh, few platinum complexes, about six, seven approved platinum complexes, which are used as an anti-cancer drug. And it was started with cis platin. I'll come to that after these slides. Then uh, it comes the anti-infective agent. There are certain silver salts or silver complexes like silver sulfur diazine, which has been found to be active against bacteria. It can interact with the cell walls of the bacteria and it can rupture the cell walls of the bacteria. And these silver sulfur diazine or silver complexes can be utilized as drug for topical uh, kind of application. And sometimes even it can be given in the uh, system itself. Then it has been found that uh, some gold complexes that can be uh, utilized as anti-inflammatory agent, particularly rheumatoid arthritis, where there is a problem basically in the knee joints or elbow joints sometime. And you know, whenever we are considering a medical application, we need to know a bit of biology as well. Perhaps uh, most of you have uh, studied biology in your schools and maybe 10 plus two. And you know that in biological cell, there is a component which is called lysozyme. So where there, this is basically contains certain uh, degrading enzymes and the pH of that inside that organelle is low around four to five. And this degrade act upon on the debris which gets generated inside the cell due to various biological processes inside the body. And those degrading enzymes used to degrade those debris from the cell and to engulf it and then it releases the things from the cell. Now, sometimes it happens, particularly in the knee joints and all, these enzymes can act upon on those knee joint itself. And it starts to degrade the um, uh, bones and muscles over there. And it creates a lot of discomfort and inflammation and uh, that needs to be stopped by certain kind of inhibitory compounds, which can inhibit the excessive activity of those enzymes. And it has been found, uh, it, it was just generally used in 70s and 80s, that some gold complexes like sodium or thiometallate, they can uh, very effectively enzymes and uh, in that way, it can act as anti-inflammatory agents. Then come anti-diabetic agents. You all know about the glucose level in the body. We need to maintain the glucose level in the body in a particular, um, a particular concentration. It should not go beyond that. It would be harmful for the body. And whenever we used to take food, the glucose level in our blood that generally increases and to um, to, um, uh, to counter that, uh, this endocrine pancreas that releases uh, insulin. And this insulin is a hormone which helps this glucose to enter inside the cell where it is to be utilized uh, for generation of the uh, energy itself. And the excess glucose that is generally getting deposited or uh, stored in liver. So this is the role of insulin hormone generally to um, make a pathway for the glucose molecules from our blood stream to enter inside the cells where it is to be utilized. But in some cases, what happens is that 
um, the pancreas might not be working in a proper way and it is not producing enough insulin when it is required. You know, in biological system is a very complicated system and there are many signaling procedure always going on inside the body that when a particular hormone is required, when a particular enzyme is required, these all are signal based. There are certain signals. So when it, the body gives that these signals that this is required, then the pancreas starts to secrete insulin, pain only. And once the enough glucose has gone inside the cell and no more much glucose is there in the blood itself, then again it signals and pancreas stops secreting insulin. It is a fine balance every time occurring inside the body. And this signaling process is really uh, uh, an important part where all these biological systems are happening in a proper way. Now, if there is a diabetic patient where the insulin perhaps is not getting uh, secreted in that much amount of uh, what is required to lower the blood sugar level, maybe there is a problem in the signaling system. The pancreas is not getting enough signal to create the, uh, in, uh, to secrete the hormone or the insulin. So these vanadium complexes they go through this complex signaling system and somehow manage the pancreas to irradiate the or activate the pancreas more so that pancreas can uh, secrete more and more insulin and the blood sugar level can be controlled inside the body. So this is another interesting um, discovery in last 20, 30 years. A lot of uh, 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 trial, clinical trial is going on on this still because vanadium complexes have certain other problems. It cannot be approved so far as a possible anti-diabetic agent, but research is going on. Maybe something can come out in next few years or so. And to the uh, last fifth category is the neurological drugs. You know, there are certain neurological disease which are very difficult uh, to treat like Huntington disease or uh, like uh, you have Alzheimer disease uh, where there is a degradation of the neurons or brain cells. And for that, it has been found that lithium could be an interesting uh, metal ion or metal which can be utilized for treatment of this kind of neurological uh, disorders or neurodegenerative uh, uh, diseases, okay? Now to start with the cisplatin because that should be the, I think the point of starting for every metal, uh, whenever we are considering the application of the metal complexes in biology, you might be knowing, might not be knowing that it was discovered by Barnett Rosenberg who was a biophysicist, he was not a chemist even. And he was working in Michigan State University. And what he was trying to do, he was trying to find out the role of, possible role of electrical field on the cell division of E. coli bacteria. So what he has done, he has taken a um, glass vessel like this one, he put some E. coli bacteria he fixed those E. coli bacteria at the bottom of this glass vessel. He puts two platinum electrode, and as an electrolyte, uh, he puts ammonium chloride. Uh, and then what happened is that he was just passing electricity through this solution. And they, he was just interested to see whether when these bacteria are placed in an electric field, whether they are uh, dividing itself or not, whether if there is any kind of effect on the, of the electric field on the cell division of the bacteria. So this experiment was conducted in 1965. And to his utter astonishment, he found that those bacteria, they stopped getting divided. No more cell division is occurring. Instead of that, what is happening is that there is a kind of a filamentous growth of bacteria. The bacteria itself is growing, but it is not getting divided. So what he understood is that there is something going on. And uh, he was, uh, for a couple of years, he was at a loss really what's happening there. But later he understood when he was using ammonium chloride as a, as a, a conductor inside the solution and platinum electrode, altogether during this process, 
some platinum uh, atom is passing into the solution as platinum two plus ion and it is forming a complex which is called cis platine where in the central there is the platinum plus two ion and there are it is a square planar complex there are two chloride ions attached to this and two ammonia molecule attached to the platinum center and this cis platine has some kind of property which is inhibiting the um, cell division of the e coli bacteria and then he understood that a dreaded uh, disease, which is cancer at that time, there were only very few drugs at that time, where the main root of cancer is cell division, uncontrolled cell division. So whether that cancer cells can be treated with cisplatin so that the uncontrolled cell division of the cancer can be uh, inhibited or can be controlled. So that was his idea and further research went uh, uh, happened and after extensive clinical trials and all i think in 1978 uh, uh, this was approved as a major drug for treating cancers of certain types of cancers and still it is one of the foremost drug utilized along with some other platinum complexes to treat cancer now, as I said that cancer happens, it is because the cell starts to divide uncontrollably. And uh, what happens is that this happens because there is a genetic change inside the cell. You know, the genetic gene in the cell, it, it is there in the nucleus and it is made up of DNA and all. So there must be some time of genetic changes happens in the DNA and the control, how much cells to be getting divided, that control is lost. And this genetic change can happen because of various factors. It could be because of smoking, that is very common we know about. And also it could be exposure to UV radiation, exposure to certain chemicals, and sometimes some viruses and hereditary things can be also playing a part. But altogether, it is the genetical change which brings about the problem of cancer inside the body. Now, whenever we are considering the cell division, we have to think about mitosis process where it goes through four different phases. You might be knowing that is prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. And uh, in the mitosis process, what happens? There is a mother cell and that gives you two daughter cells. That is the mother cell gets vanished and from there it comes two daughter cells. So during this process, you need to make duplication of everything which is there inside the mother cell. And this whole process of du making duplication of everything in the mother cell and then fragment the mother cell into two daughter cells, it goes through a cycle. This cycle is shown here, which is called cell cycle. What happens in cell cycle is that it starts from G1, that is when there is a mother cell, it starts to grow and there are some normal metabolic process used to go in the mother cell. And this is called first growth phase or G1 phase. After that, in that G1 phase, basically the cell is growing. Then comes the S phase or synthesis phase where the DNA is to be replicated because it has to be, it has got the signal from some place that now it is the time that you divide. So once the, it gets the signal, it starts to replicate the DNA. DNA is there in the nucleus to replicate the DNA and form the DNA and duplication of the DNA. It is the uh, other part where um, used to send the um, um, uh, messenger RNA and that messenger RNA used to go to the DNA uh, nucleus and it is, uh, there are certain enzymes called RNA polymerase. So that RNA polymerase copy the sequence of the nucleus uh, they copy the sequence of the um, nucleobases which are there in the DNA and it brings back this information to ribosome. And what happens is that this process is called transcription and then the protein which is required to be uh, synthesized for duplication of the DNA, that gets, uh, that gets synthesized and that is called translation process. So this transcription and translation process starts to happen. And once the DNA is duplicated, then the cell enters into the growth phase of two, 
where the cell double checks that whatever DNA has been produced or duplicated, whether the sequence of the nucleobases in that particular DNA is proper or not. If it is found proper, quality control is done. So it allows the cell to go into the mitotic phase through prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. But if during the double cross checking, if the cell finds that there is something wrong over there, so what will happen? It will not allow this particular cell to uh, go into this mitotic phase and it, it will uh, take out it from the cell cycle and it will get destroyed. Now, in the whole this cycle cycle process, there are many materials involved, many biomolecules involved. It is not only about the DNA, but there are certain enzymes, certain proteins, certain cell signaling biomolecules, a lot of biology. I am not going into that. But the point I want to <coughs> underline here that if you can manage to inhibit the function of all these, any one of these components, which are really contributing in the cell cycle progression, then what will happen? The cell cycle progression will stop. It is like making a building. Whenever we are making a building, we require so many things, you know, cement, stone, uh, bricks, uh, maybe sand, maybe plaster and all those things. And if the supply of only one of these is get disturbed, the building will not be completed. So the making or cell division is just like that. All the enzymes and proteins and biomolecules needs to work in tandem and then only the cell cycle uh, process can be completed and cell division can occur. So if we want to stop this cell division for cancerous cells, what do you need to do? Either you have to block or turn off the signals that tell the cancer cell to grow and divide or you prevent the cancer cells from living longer than normal. Cancer cells are like immortal. They don't get destroyed easily. So you have to kill them in some way or other, or you have to sit surgically remove them from the body. That is the way. But it is not possible every time there are certain parts of the body which is very sensitive and removing it by surgery is not a, uh, not a very uh, <clears throat> recommended procedure. In that case, what you need to do, you need to treat with the patient with the chemotherapy. And otherwise, the third, you destroy the cancer cells in somehow. So these are the approaches, chemotherapeutic approach to treat the cancer patient. Now, the question is uh, that uh, whenever these platinum complexes is getting formed, that cis platine, where this platinum complex is going inside the cell, so they try to find out where is the maximum ratio of platinum atom versus the particular biomolecules or entity. And you can see among all these entities, it is the DNA where the maximum number of platinum atoms are located. So it is envisaged that definitely this is platinum. It is going inside the cell and going inside the DNA. And somehow it is making some interaction with the DNA. And that is how it is not allowing the cell to get divided any longer. And it is creating a, uh, a barrier so that cell division cannot occur. So if we really want to find out where that particular platinum complex is going, when we are trying to find out uh, uh, the interaction between the DNA and the platinum complex. So first you need to know the structure of the DNA, and I believe all of you might be knowing the structure of the DNA. It's a double helical structure, and the blue ribbons, what you can see outside, that is basically made up of uh, phosphate, uh, sugar, and phosphate uh, getting breached between the sugars. And internally, there are four nuclear bases adenine, guanine, thiamine, and cytosine, which forms the kind of a base pair through the hydrogen bonding and making a staircase like spiral, staircase like structure. So that is how it looks like the DNA. Now the question is where the platinum is going. So they found that platinum complex, when it is in the bloodstream, it remains neutral in nature. There is no residual charge on the platinum complex. Why it is so? It is so because platinum is plus two and two chloride ions are minus one, minus one. So it is neutralizing the charge on the top of the platinum ion. So it is remaining uh, neutral in nature. And in the bloodstream, though it is made up of water mainly, but the concentration of the chloride ion is quite high. It is almost 100 micromolar. 
So water molecules do not replace the chloride ion. You can think about this uh, spectrochemical series. If you look at it, you'll find water is a stronger ligand than chloride. But as the concentration of the chloride ion is quite substantial in the bloodstream, the platinum complex remains neutral. And that helps the platinum complex to diffuse through the cell membrane. Okay, we cell membrane and it goes inside the cell. And once it enters the cell, what happens is that the chloride concentration inside the cell drops drastically. It becomes something around five micromolar in nature. And in that case, inside the cell in the cytosol, the water molecule, which is spectroscopically, uh, spectrophoto metrically has been proved that through the spectrochemical series that is a, a stronger ligand than chloride. So it substitutes the chloride ion. So the, both the chloride ion get substituted and the whole complex become cationic in nature. Now, if you consider the structure of the DNA, you'll find that DNA, there is a phosphate bridge and these phosphate ions are negatively charged. So DNA is basically negatively charged biomolecule and we have a platinum complex, which is positively charged once it enters inside the cell. So what will happen? Uh, you can expect that the positively charged metal complex will go towards the negatively charged DNA. And in DNA, there are several, these four nucleobases. Among them, guanine uh, can really, uh, there are nitrogen donors in the guanine. And if you again go back to the spectrochemical series, you will see that nitrogen donors are stronger ligand than water. So this platinum complex, once it goes near to the uh, DNA, the guanine nitrogen that starts to coordinate to the platinum center. And this coordination can happen from the same strand or from two different strands. Depending upon that, it is said intra-strand adduct or inter-strand cross-link can happen. And what more is that this nitrogen of the guanine that gets attached to the platinum center, this is N7 nitrogen. And why it happens always like that? Because of the presence of the ammonia ligand attached to the platinum center. This ammonia ligand makes a kind of hydrogen bond with this keto group of the guanine and making this platinum available to be get coordinated by N7 nitrogen of the guanine nucleobase. So the platinum goes inside the DNA and several platinum atom goes inside the DNA. In that way, it destroys the, um, the helical structure of the DNA. So when the transcription and translation things has to be happen, and when the RNA polymerase is checking the nucleobase sequence in the DNA, it is not going to get the proper information because of the problem in uh, some kind of uh, deformation in the structure of the DNA. So the transcription process cannot happen in a proper way. So once it gets uh, disarrayed or it gets uh, somehow derailed the whole cycle, in the G2 phase, when the cell double checks that if the duplicated DNA or chromosome is uh, really um, managed to be synthesized in a proper way or not, they will find no, it is not, not getting properly uh, formed or synthesized. So it will go into the Z0 phase that it is not allowed uh, to go into the mitosis anymore. And in this way, the cell gets killed or it is not allowed to get divided anymore. So this is the outcome of the platinum DNA adduct, which is getting formed. Now, once this is platin is discovered serendipitously in 1965, after that, uh, I think thousands of platinum complexes have been synthesized, have been tested. And among them, you can see these are the sum of the platinum complexes over the years, which have been approved. Some of them approved uh, worldwide. Some of them are approved only by certain countries like Japan and China or Korea. And these are seven, eight platinum complexes, which are right now used as a approved anti-cancer drug uh, for treatment of the cancer. And it came from the desk of uh, coordination chemists. Now there are huge drawbacks of these platinum complexes because these platinum complexes uh, they can kill the cells, they are cytotoxic, but they are toxic for the body. Why they are toxic for the body? They are toxic because this platinum is a soft metal ion. 
and it can interact with the various enzymes inside the body. And many enzymes contains thiol groups or thioether groups. So soft donor, soft acceptor, there will be interaction. The enzyme, uh, the function of the enzymes is going to be inhibited. So a lot of issues. There are gastrointestinal problems, there are kidney problems, there are hematological problems, there is autotoxicity, that is, that means hearing problem. And after certain time, the cells, the cancer cells, they acquire resistance to the platinum complexes. That if after a certain period of time, if you treat the cancer patient with these platinum complexes, the cancer cells will become resistant to these platinum drugs. So it will not work really. Okay, so that is the big issue with this kind of chemotherapeutic agent. So uh, people try to find out alternative uh, of platinum complexes. And these three compounds, what you are seeing, the first two compounds uh, are ruthenium three compounds. And the third one is ruthenium two compounds, which is an organometallic compound. They found to be very, very uh, uh, pr promising to treat different kinds of cancers. Uh, the first one is active against primary tumors. The second one is active against metastatic tumor. Now, what is metastatic tumor? That is, you know, the cancer spreads. It starts to spread after a certain period of time from one body parts to the other part. And this is called metastasize. So once it metastasize uh, starts to happen, it is very difficult to control the spread of the <clears throat> spread of the cancer inside the body. And these uh, ruthenium compound, which is an organometallic compound, it has been found to be active against metastasis as well as it acts as an anti-angiogenic property. What is anti-angiogenic property? It says that it does not, it, angiogenesis is formation of the blood vessels between the tissues and the bloodstream. So once the cancer cell metastasize go from one place to the other place, it sits in other organ and it starts to form the angiogenesis used to start to happen so that they can get all the ingredients so that they can thrive at that part of the organ. So if you can cut down the connection between the bloodstream and the cell, it is possible to control the growth of the uh, growth of the this metastasis or and the spreading of the cancer inside the body. So any chemotherapeutic agent which is anti-angiogenic in nature, it can stop the growth of the uh, metastasis inside the body. Now, there are extensive <coughs> studies happened to find out the mechanism of these ruthenium complexes. Now, among these three complexes, the first two complexes uh, are in clinical trial in phase one and phase two. And uh, the Rapta compound, it, has, it is in preclinical trial at this moment. And you can see they are not really working in the same way like platinum complexes. They are not working by getting attached to the DNA, but they are working by inhibition of certain proteins or certain enzymes or some kind of transformation extracellularly, which is the root cause why these kind of compounds can show anti-cancer activities. But still I'm saying these complexes are in clinical trial. It has not been approved so far. And you know that for clinical trial takes time. So these compounds, they were discovered, their anti-cancer activity was discovered. Sometimes it's 90s or so. And after that, uh, a lot of biological studies have been done. And now they are undergoing this clinic, clinical trial. Now, going from this chemotherapy, one difficult problem for chemotherapy is that the chemotherapeutic agent don't discriminate between uh, healthy cells and cancerous cells. So what happens is that it can go to all kinds of cells and it can kill all kinds of cells. So we need to somehow make some kind of mechanism so that these cells can only go to the cancerous cell only and it does not uh, go to the uh, healthy cells and making it so much selective for the cancerous cell is difficult. So some alternative route has been tested and uh, some new uh, phenomena has been generated, which is called photodynamic therapy to treat the cancer patient. What is this? This is a treatment that involves light sensitive medicine and a light source to destroy abnormal cells. So what is said about that, that this PDT 
agents they are on their own this medicine and the light source they are harmless the when you use this pdt agent inside the body it will not make any harm to the body until unless you activate them with light when you activate them with light then what, what happen is that it gets activated and it cause a reaction which damages the nearby cells so what is the advantage of the pdt in this case there are several advantages the first one that it has no long term side effect it is only active when it is exposed to light second is that it is less invasive than surgery you don't need surgery to remove them third it usually takes only a short time and is most often it is done as an outpatient procedure you don't require uh, hospitalization for this fourth it can be targeted very precisely that means you treat the cancer patient periodically for few times with this pdt agent and then when enough of the pdt agent got accumulated in the cancer cell you activate it with light of a specific wavelength so those compounds which got accumulated inside the cancer cell what will happen it will get activated and it will form singlet oxygen or reactive oxygen species inside those cells and this reactive oxygen species will destroy those cells what is the fifth advantage unlike radiation therapy pdt can be repeated many times at the same site if required sixth there is usually little or no scarring after the site heals and it is often less costly than uh, classical cancer treatment but there are certain disadvantages also what is that the disadvantage is that pdt can be used in only that place of the body where light can reach because if you cannot activate the compound with light it will not work so basically it is much more uh effective for skin cancer or something just under the skin or something which is inside the body where uh, a light source can get reach then only so the gastrointestinal tract or something like that they are only it can be utilized second pdt cannot be used to treat cancer that have spread many places because it is very difficult to find where it is there once it starts to spread and third uh after the treatment the person or the patient becomes a bit sensitive towards light so some precaution needs to be taken and fourth is that as for certain blood diseases pdd cannot be utilized so these are the advantages and disadvantages of the pdt reagent okay now generally um, porphyrin rings or thallocyanin rings they are very very active to uh, show light absorption go into the excited state and when it is coming back from excited state to the lower energy state it is releasing energy and that released energy can interact with the triplet oxygen which is their molecular oxygen in the body and it converts the triplet oxygen into singlet oxygen and once the singlet oxygen is formed it is very very dangerous for the body it really kill the cells but we use that for killing only the cancer cell not to the healthy cells so there is one uh, paper from journal of american chemical society where you can see that they have utilized some ruthenium complexes uh, some ruthenium phenanthrolin or substituted bipyridyl complexes so what happens is that in this complex number 2 and complex number 3 the ligands are made in such a way that it is crowding Uh, it is making a kind of crowding and sterically demanding situation surrounding the ruthenium center so what happens is that they have substituted the bipyridyl with some methyl group here and they make the crowding over there now when they make these complexes this 1 2 3 2, they found these complexes are non cytotoxic they are not showing any cytotoxicity but when compound 2 it it shows absorption of the light and what happens is that the compound 2 when it is treated it can get converted by releasing one of the ligand which is very very 
making the steric congestion here you can see this 66 methyl substituted bipredin ligand when you excite it with a light of 450 nanometer of wavelength this particular bipredin ligand gets ejected and that two coordination position now taken up by the water molecule and once this ruthenium aqua complex is formed it becomes cytotoxic it kills cancer cells you can see from here the blue line is for this particular complex which is not killing cancer cells but the red line is for this particular complex where it can kill cancer cells with the increase of the concentration of the formation of this diaqua complex and it has been found that it it binds to the dna so the activity of this diaqua complex of the ruthenium compound <clears throat> has been found to be getting attached to the dna and killing the cancerous cell so this is some spectroscopic study that has been found to make the kinetics of the ejection of the ligand from the coordination sphere of the ruthenium and this is the kind of graph it has been found that within 5 minutes or 10 minutes time almost all the uh, substituted bipredin ligand is ejected from the coordination sphere and it becomes that completely gets converted into the diaqua complex which can uh, basically act as a cytotoxic agent and they tested their cytotoxicity against the various sense cancer cell lines you can see it, this one is for cisplatin which is a known anti cancer drug and this cisplatin in the blue line in the dark in the red line it is showing when it is treated in the light for cisplatin there is no effect of light so it is cytotoxic both in the dark in the light but if you consider compound number 2 or compound number 3 the blue line shows mostly it is non cytotoxic up to certain concentration when it is treated in the dark but when it is exposed to the light it becomes very very cytotoxic with the increasing concentration of the compound am i audible yes 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 yes, yes. I, it is uh, sometimes it is uh, always better to take the feedback because i don't know if i am talking and i got disconnected in the process okay so thank you now going to the fact so this is all about chemotherapy and pdt to treat cancer now a bit of metal complexes utilization of metal complexes in sensing what is happening inside the inside the cell if we want to sense the first one is sensing nitric oxide now nitric oxide gets produced in the body uh, by one enzyme which is called endothelial nitric oxide synthase enzyme and it uh, gets produced from guanidine nitrogen of l arginine so this is more biology i am not going into that but what happens is that higher intracellular level of reactive nitrogen species can create problems so if there is a lot of nitric oxide generated inside the body it can lead to neurodegenerative disorders so it is always important to check that if what is the concentration of the nitric oxide inside the body how much nitric oxide is getting generated inside the cell so to test that uh, scientists developed uh, this particular ruthenium complexes which does not show any fluorescence due to uh, photo induced electron transfer process what happens is that uh, this compound this ligand is fluorescent but when it is attached to the ruthenium complex the whole complex become non fluorescent it is because these two amino group they are electron donating group and this particular bipredil area which is basically the fluorophore it donates its electron to the fluorophore so this fluorophore after absorption of the electron the electron goes to the higher state but the electron cannot come back to the lower state because the lower state is filled up by these electrons from this uh, donor site okay so that is how it is uh, called uh, the pet process so to quench the fluorescence of the compound now what happens is that this particular complex when it is treated with nitric oxide in presence of oxygen some changes happen some transformation happens here and it forms a triazole ring now this triazole ring is basically an electron withdrawing group so earlier it was electron donating group now it becomes electron withdrawing group so what happens the pet process stops and the whole system becomes fluorescent in nature and 
if within the cell nitric oxide is getting generated that particular complex which transforms into triazole and show fluorescence it can give you an idea that within the cell how much nitric oxide is getting generated so this is the picture taken for some plant cells and you can see that upon treatment with that ruthenium complex and with increase of time there is a a uh, signal of red fluorescence which is growing growing and growing that gives an important indication that how much nitric oxide is getting generated inside the cell so this is a wonderful system to see inside the cell that how much nitric oxide is getting generated and it can be quantized also similarly hydrogen peroxide also it can get generated inside the body because of various biological <clears throat> processes and hydrogen peroxide is also dangerous for the body because it creates reactive oxygen species as i say and it can react with biomolecules and destroy the cell so scientists developed such kind of a zinc complex and again this zinc complex is non fluorescence because of the pet process and what happens is that when it is treated with hydrogen peroxide and one particular enzyme which is called myelo peroxidase there is some transformation happens in this sulfur there is addition of oxygen into that sulfur and that makes this particular moiety electron withdrawing in nature the so pet process is removed and in presence of hydrogen peroxide this complex becomes fluorescent in nature and you can see the the picture quality may not be very good but you can see there are certain red dots which is showing that with increasing concentration of this compound within the cell it can detect how much hydrogen peroxide is getting generated inside the cell and that can be also through certain graphs and all with the increasing concentration of the h2o2 it is possible to quantize that how much peroxide is getting generated so these metal complexes give are giving excellent tool to check inside the cell give us the in our eyes to go inside the cell and check how much no is getting generated or how much hydrogen peroxide is getting generated now <clears throat> another point is that as i said for chemotherapeutic agent or for various agents they can indiscriminately go to the various part of the body and can create problem so they are required some kind of special reagent which is called drug delivery agent which can deliver the particular pizza to your doorstep so pizza is definitely the uh, drug and doorstep is basically the cancer cells now for drug delivery agent who the pizza delivery boy it must be there are certain characteristics the first is that it must be porous so that you can load your drug it must be stable in biological fluids it's not degrade inside the biological fluid and it must deliver the drug in the right address now you know this you might be knowing about metal organic framework the metal ions there are certain ligands surrounding the metal ions which get attached to the metal complex and if you make a, a good combination of your metal ion and different bridging ligands you can get porous structure through metal organic framework and one such porous structure is made up of by uh, professor omar yagi's group uh, which is called a the pet name is given that is zif90 or zif90 this is formed by combination of zinc ion and imidazole uh, aldehyde and uh, upon solvothermal synthesis they used to give some metal organic framework with lot of porous uh, space where you can load your drug and this zif90 has been um, uh, utilized by one particular group to deliver certain proteins inside the cell now why proteins deliver is important because uh, proteins can do wonder inside the cell if one particular cell is not working in a proper way because of certain reason if you can increase the concentration of certain kind of protein suppose if you want to kill that cell it is a cancerous cell so rnas there is an enzyme which can kill the cancer cells so if you can load your particular RNAs inside this metal organic framework, and you can deliver it specifically inside the cancerous cell. So 
it can get released and it can work. Now, how it is getting released, how the metal organic framework is getting collapsed, it is happening because in the cell, the concentration of the phosphate ion is quite high. And it has been found that ZIF-90, if you treat ZIF-90 with phosphate ion, the phosphate ion gets coordinated to the zinc center and the whole structure gets collapsed. So that is the idea that has been taken that you encapsulate your proteins or RNAs or whatever you want to encapsulate and then you send it into the bloodstream. It will go inside the cell. They make a nanoparticle of this ZIF-90 and uh, protein encapsulated ZIF-90. They goes inside the cell because nanoparticles are taken up very quickly inside the cell. And then what happens is that in cell, the concentration of the phosphate ion is more. So it will interact with the zinc ion. The whole structure of the metal organic framework will just uh, collapse and your protein or your drug will get released and it will start working upon on the cell. So this is an, a fantastic example where this metal organic framework is itself used for delivery of the anti-cancer agent. Now, we, had a, we have published one work. This is the only work I'm going to show about from my research group. If the delivery agent itself is anti-cancer drug. So you have seen that ruthenium complexes can show anti-cancer activities. So this is a molecule that we have synthesized, which used to show gelation property. That is, it makes gel. Gel is a state which is not solid, not liquid, but something in between where there is extensive hydrogen bonding and the solvents are entrapped inside the gel. Now, this particular molecule, we have kept one carboxylic acid open. Okay, there are three carboxylic acid and we have make uh, amide bonds in two of them and we kept one free. And what happens is that when we treat it with this dimeric ruthenium starting material, we get a complex like this and it forms a gel. And we have given the name of this complex as ruthenium G5. Now, why we have kept one carboxylic acid uh, group open, it is because it can, if released, if this ligand is released within the cancer cell, it can compete with lactic acid. Why? Why lactic acid? Because in cancerous cell, as it is dividing very fast, it requires a lot of energy. And there, the, the energy generation does not happen through this aerobic oxidation of the glucose, but their anaerobic glycolysis used to happen and which produces this lactic acid. And this lactic acid, if get concentrated inside the cancerous cell, the pH drops very much, and then the cancer cell gets destroyed. So to take care of, there is a protein which is called monocarboxylate transporter. That MCT protein uh, takes up this lactic acid and it uh, takes away the lactic acid from the inside of the cell. So we thought that this ruthenium complex if delivered inside the cell, and if it gets released, the gel structure is destroyed, then this carboxylate will be opened up and it will compete with the lactic acid and it will not allow the lactic acid to go away by monocarboxylate transporter. So we got a gel after the reaction of this one. And when we utilize this gel to check about the anti-cancer activity, what we found is that that upon addition, so this is an in vitro experiment first, that is upon addition of lactic acid, what happens we see that gel used to get collapse. So in cancer cell, we know the pH is less than normal cells. In normal cells, the pH is 7.4. And in cancer cell, the pH remains something like six. So we understood that our ruthenium gel in pH six, it collapses and it gives a white precipitate. And this white precipitate, we have checked what it is. We found that it's a mixture of the original organogel G5. And in the supernatant liquid, what you are seeing, that is a brown color, we tried to understand what happens to the ruthenium. And we found that when you treat it with lactic acid, 
the ruthenium makes a complex which is called ruthenium lactyl lactate so there is some organic transformation of the lactic acid happened and it forms a ruthenium lactyl lactate and we try to check the cytotoxicity of this compound and we found that our gelator organogelator molecule which is non cytotoxic but when we make it complex with ruthenium g5 make a gel and it shows quite significant cytotoxicity so the gel itself is an anti cancer agent and when it goes inside the cell the ph is there around 6 the gel itself gets collapsed ruthenium gets released and this ruthenium lactyl lactate is basically acting as the drug to kill the cancerous cell so the ruthenium g5 from where we have started that you can say it's a pro drug and after the release of the g5 thing what happens is that we are getting this particular ruthenium lactyl lactate complex and which is uh, showing cytotoxicity now in the last part of my presentation i just wanted to tell you some interesting fact this is a nobel prize given to james allison from usa and tasuku honzo from kyoto university japan they got the nobel prize by checking uh, the uh, the role of immunity to treat the cancer patient okay so they got the nobel prize for the discovery of cancer therapy by inhibition of negative immune regulation now what is that that is we know we have some innate immunity in our body there are t cells and there are b cells b cells are very much antigen specific t cells are always checking our body if there is something going on something wrong some antigen is there it starts to fire bullets and it wants to kill that particular antigen and they do it by certain proteins and enzymes called cytokine and all now there are certain proteins which is ctla4 or pd1 these protein used to keep the activity of the t cell on checks so these are the breaks for the t cell because t cells can get so activated that it becomes so much destructive it starts to destroy our own cell so when that much t cells are not required these protein ctla4 and pd1 that inhibits the function of the t cells and these are known as immunity checkpoint or break for our own immune system now these two scientists have shown that for cancer treatment if you can nullify the activity of these checkpoints then our t cells will become so active that it itself can kill the cancer cell so that is the way they got the novel prize in 2018 in medicine now this earlier the conception was there when you put a patient on chemotherapy with metal complex generally chemotherapy suppresses the immunity that was the idea earlier that it it suppresses the immunity but what happens is that in recent studies it has been found that if you can combine the properly the chemotherapy and immunotherapy really complementary to each other the proof came like that the cancer cell it has a tendency to evade the immunity system in our body by upregulating certain enzymes and proteins i am not going into that but in case of well treating a particular uh, mice that is it happened this study happened on a mice that they checked that if you treat a mice can with a cancer uh, growth with this oxaliplatin and they took some mice without their immunity and some with immunity so in some mice they taken out the immunity factor so what they found is that when the mice are immunocompetent that is immunity is already there when we use only placebo there is not much effect and you can see with the days the tumor volume increases or there is tumor growth but when the mice treated with oxaliplatin this drug it is effective and it is retarding the growth of the tumor volume but when the same thing was done with immuno incompetent mice what happens they found that 
the auxiliary platen is not working at all. That means for the success of this platinum-based cancerous drug, it is important that there should be the immune system inside the body also present. So what happens is that the outcome is like that. We used to test many drugs in vitro and we found that they are not active, but we don't know if you put this in vitro drug, what we are testing in vitro, if you put it in actual biological system, we don't know it will work or not. So this is the example where it has shown that when immunity system is not there, auxiliary platin is not working, but immunity system is there, it is functional, auxiliary platin is working against cancerous cells. So to conclude, uh, in the last 50 years, the field of biological application of metal complexes have been matured. A lot, lot of information have come through and a lot of things are now getting really applied or commercialized. It came up with at least 15 complexes so far, which are now approved as medicines and 10 more different compounds, metal compounds, they are in different phases of clinical trial. And this recent, recent researches show prominent scope for diagnosis through fluorescence application of metal complexes. MOFs can be act as efficient drug delivery agent and metallogels can be act as a self-deliverable anti-cancer drugs. And at the last, this effect of application of metallo drugs and immunoresponse required to be explored further for more efficient treatment. At the end, I would like to <clears throat> Uh, give the, my acknowledgement to the paper I have shown uh, that was from two of my students, Dr. Navina Malavia. She is right now in Queens University, Belfast as a postdoctoral fellow. And Ms. Chanchal Sonkar, she is writing her thesis at this moment and supposed to submit any day, maybe a few days, uh, for the funding of obviously a CRB grant and CSIR grant, and also our institute itself, Indian Institute of Technology Indoor for all the support. And uh, uh, at the last, I must thank you all for your patience here. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Mukhopadhyay, for such a nice presentation. You explained everything in such a lucid manner that I also learned. And the, I think the students learned too many things from here. So now, is the time for question and answer discussion and already there is some question in the chat box and i am requesting other participants that you can write your question in the chat box and i am conveying all these questions to professor mukhavadhyay so first of all the question is the first question what is thermodynamic stability of a complex uh, thermodynamic stability, I don't know how it is connected here that much. Uh, uh, I don't know, uh, even the question, I have no idea really what, uh, what information he wants to get or she wants to get. Definitely if the complex, uh, how much it is stable in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, energy, that should be the thermodynamic stability of the complex. So uh, that's it. Okay, the next question is how carbon forms six or five bonds in complexes? Well, that is the fluxional nature of carbon no? in benzene ring or uh, parasimine ring. Uh, it can take up, there are three, uh, three pi bonds and all the three pi bonds can get, uh, can donate the uh, electron pair to the vacant orbital of the metal ion. Uh, taking up three different positions of the coordination geometry. So, and as these pi bonds are involved, all the six carbons, so definitely all the six carbons are contributing in getting attached to the metal center. Okay. The next question is, can we use photodynamic therapy for the treatment of blood cancer? I don't think so. So far, there is no report as such because blood cancer is a kind of uh, cancer which is happening because of uh, bone marrow there is something wrong in the bone marrow and all uh, i don't i have not seen any any uh, uh, any i think 
uh, example where the blood cancer has been getting treated by PDT. And PDT is a, um, is a thing which just getting developed in last 15 years or so. So perhaps no, perhaps no. Yeah. How does the human body defend against reactive oxygen species? Well, there are certain enzymes, you know, this uh, catalase and uh, superoxide dismutase, all containing metal complexes. Huh? So uh, also peroxidases, peroxidase having iron porphyrin uh, compound, superoxide dismutase having copper ion. So they are all redox acting metal ion and they try to uh, means uh, uh, somehow dissipate this uh, uh, reactive oxygen species by oxidizing them uh, to oxygen or uh, reducing them to water. That is the how the body defends against all these uh, reactive oxygen species. Ascorbic acid also, okay, that is also can act as a scavenger to this uh, reactive oxygen species. Okay. Metal complexes accumulate in the body even if some are non cytotoxic. If they accumulate in the body and reach a certain level, will it cause some risk and or harm? Definitely. Uh, what happens is that you know this uh, uh, body means inside the cell. I want to say that uh, there are certain transporting mechanism for the all the molecules, and there are certain transporting proteins. So if the metal complexes get attached to those transported transporting proteins like uh, serum albumin, human serum albumin, they can be delivered to the cells. And then in the cells, if the metal complexes are neutral in nature, because uh, there is it's a bilipid kind of cell membrane, which only allow basically mostly the neutral species to diffuse through. So it can go inside the cell and can sit there. But if it sits inside the cell, we don't know how it is going to behave. That needs to be studied. All the complexes are not cytotoxic. Some are cytotoxic. Some might, uh, in, uh, might interact with uh, different enzymes and proteins. And in these cases, definitely it can create some problems. So that has to be investigated very, very uh, extensively that if the metal complex can really get inside the cell, and if it can interact with the biomolecules. So it is a case to case basis, actually. Okay. Then will the healthy cells near cancer cell that absorb the drugs be affected will, after will, exposure yeah. to light? It will affect. It will affect. If it will affect. But the thing is that that PDT, you can just try to concentrate it only on those area. Well, even if you will have cancer cells, they are not all cancer cells. The cancer cells, the, uh, they are mixed up sometimes with the healthy cells. So that risk is always there when you expose it with uh, the light, uh, even the healthy cells will also get destroyed. But the advantage is more that outweighs the disadvantage. So that's why uh, they are getting uh, treated like that. Then what are some of the possible advantages of nanomedicine over conventional cancer treatments? Yeah, you know, nanoparticle can be uh, easily taken up by the cell. That is, uh, there is uh, the uh, particular methodology uh, by which uh, it can, the, our, our cells, which is uh, basically having cell membranes, they can capture the nanoparticles very quickly. There are certain specific methodology or biological process. So that is uh, for delivery of the uh, compound or delivery of the medicine to the cells. Uh, if you can somehow make it in a nano formulation, it is more effective than in general formulation. So delivery will be faster or the taking up or up uptake of the drug inside the cell will be faster. Sir, can you please tell how the cancerous cells are getting resistant to cis platin? You know, our body, I said that our body having immunity system. No, this immunity system is basically when the body was first, I think in the human history is very long. There was no medicine at that time. So the body, the nature has made the body in such a way 
that there are certain methodology which used to take care of the body, any antigen, any toxic things coming, going inside the body that has to be dissipated in some way or other that has to be thrown out from the body. So there are certain mechanisms, particularly thiol-based mechanism, many enzymes are having thiol group, okay? So what happens is that metal complexes many times goes inside the cell and interact with thiols and thiol reduces that metal complexes and the activity gets lost. So there are certain uh, automatically, naturally available, naturally available uh, defense system in our body for those molecules which is coming from the outside. And those medicines which we are uh, administering for kind of a benefit, our body won't understand that it is for the benefit. It will take it as a foreign particle and it will try to neutralize the activity of that uh, compounds. So body always try to neutralize the activity of that compound. And in that way, it develops a kind of mechanism after long run, even the cisplatin, which might be acting as a perfect anti-cancer drug or chemotherapeutic drug inside the body. After a few years, the body will acquire some kind of resistation, resisting mechanism that it will able to deactivate the drug in some way or other. So there are different, uh, different uh, methodologies, but uh, um, mostly it gets reduced by thiols. That is the thing. Okay, now there is a message from our colleague, Dr. Dr. Deepsika Bhattacharya. She is saying that, uh, sir, thank you very much for your awesome presentation. We have learned so many important informations from your presentation. Now, my question is, can we form MOFs using carbon dots in place of metals for drug delivery applications? So carbon dots is a different kind of uh, particle and that is also porous in nature, carbon dots, quantum dots, all of them having uh, some kind of um, void space inside that and where you can load your drugs, okay? So it has started from geolite, but geolite cannot be utilized because that is not water soluble. But both certain MOFs are water soluble, but it is, even in water solution, they are remaining in the same structure and you can load your drug inside that. That is the beauty. So that is also can be done for carbon dots. Lot of research is now going on on carbon dots and other quantum dots. That is possible. Okay. Then another question. If the configurational change than metal complexes may cause side effects, that if there is any configuration uh, change, then metal complexes may Well, cause you side see effects. that this is cisplatin, transplatin, no, when cisplatin is active, transplatin is toxic but not active not cytotoxic okay toxic means it is uh, if it goes inside the body it will create problem because it will be acting with uh, acting with definitely different enzymes but as the cis configuration is not uh, there so it will not able to bind that strongly with the dna but with the dna definitely the cis platin will be a stronger binder so that is why cis platin shows cytotoxicity but the trans platin does not show and okay, he is asking that uh, someone is asking that please, if can share if you can share slides. I'll I'll send it to Dr. Bhattacharya. Yeah, he can distribute if if it is really helpful for you, it will, he will distribute. Okay, okay, okay. Then I will share to everyone who is present in this seminar. Heavy metals are generally toxic to the body. body. Metal complexes have some heavy metals. How is this made possible? Yeah, again, I am telling that, you know, that if you look at the bioinorganic chemistry um, in the nature for the physiological systems, uh, heavy, heavy metals means if you think about 4D or 5D metals, then they are not utilized by bioinorganic system because that can create problem. All those metal ions are softer in nature and it starts to interact with the sulfur compounds inside the body. Uh, whatever metalloenzymes or redox enzymes or metalloproteins are there, all from 3D series, okay, iron, copper, nickel. So maybe platinum, gold, they are very much uh, dear to us and that is very costly, but the, basically speaking in the 
uh, in the nature's point of view, they are useless. Uh, copper, nickel, zinc are more useful than uh, iron, gold, platinum, or silver. So, uh, so um, I think it means uh, uh, that's why uh, these platinum ruthenium complexes, which is not naturally present in the body, whenever it is entering into the body, it creates problem. And you see these complexes, we are uh, utilizing to create purposefully to create problems because we want to kill the cells. So that's why we are utilizing this kind of metal ions. We want to create problem. What is the problem? To kill the cells. But why we want to create the problem? Because that cells are creating problem inside our body. That is the cancer. So we want purposefully, we want to create problem in our body to kill cells. Okay. Okay, now I will go to go to Professor Sonji Bhosh, sir, if he has any questions. Sir. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> uh, one is a very nice talk. Uh, Thank you, sir. Very, Thank you. Uh, inside the uh, metal organic uh, framework as all, uh, all, and other cisplatin and all these uh, metal complexes that have been used for medical purpose. Uh, one thing I want to ask you or, you know, add to or, or a comment you can make that MOF are used for drug delivery. Sir, you have muted yourself. You have to unmute yourself, sir. Can you hear me? Yeah, right now. Uh, yes. Yeah, some of the MOFs are, uh, you know, water soluble, as you mentioned. Right, right. It can be used as drug delivery, but till I think some MOFs have uh, toxic properties. So even if they are water soluble. You know. Yes, it could be because metal ions, as I said, that. Uh, one problem is that if uh, the metal organic framework itself is toxic in nature, definitely that cannot be utilized as a drug, drug delivery. delivery. Agent. That yes. cannot be utilized. But some of the metal complexes are very widely studied because they are not that much toxic. Uh, so few of them are really widely getting investigated how that can be utilized as a uh, delivery agent. I think one of them is that ZIF. That is, uh, I think, I think in nineties that was prepared by Professor Omar Yagi's group or something like that. I think that's true. Yeah, the thing is, uh, these days people that's why are using, uh, you know, supramolecule na natural supramolecule right. means right. the cage protein. Right. There are many proteins. There are cage protein. For example, right. the ferritin. Ferritin is in our body. Yes. And yes. if you remove the iron from the ferritin, it's apoferritin. Right. And apoferritin is being used for drug delivery. Yes. Because it is completely, you know, non-toxic. Yes, and, uh, yes. So, so that yeah. kind of drug delivery is also going on uh, using the protein. Natural. Itself, yes. Is, it is always yeah. better that you use the natural resources. And if we can just modify it here and there and we can utilize right. it, it is always better because mostly they are not toxic to our body, mm. we know. Mm -hmm. But all the synthesized compounds, there are chances of toxicity is always there, always there. Yes. The ferritin is one example. When yes, ferritin is to remove iron, then apoferritin. Apoferritin. And ferritin then... is used for drug delivery. Yes. These yes. are completely non-toxic. Right, so right, 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 right. Uh, they can be a good substitute for it. Yes, yes, yes. yes. And Again, then, once again, yeah. yeah. Yes, and in uh, ferritin, apoferritin shell, there are both hydrophobic and hydrophilic channels. Right. So you can uh, load both, yeah. I think, uh, char charged compounds and non charged compounds. Actually, so both these, possibilities are there. These apoferritins are used as a nano reactor also. This yes, yes. Is nice yes. for nano reaction. Yes, sir. Yes. So sometimes this is called a nano reactor. Absolutely. But as you mentioned, yeah, there are some channels as well. Yes. Yes. So you can uh, put your uh, or load the drug in the channel or in the cavity, right. and then deliver it. Uh, by right. Right. Yeah. Yes, 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 absolutely, absolutely. Okay, well, thank you very much for your lecture, and you, I'm, very, I'm sure that students have been, you know, benefited yes. a lot. Yes. So hope yes. to see you in some days in. Our yeah, campus. definitely. I would love to go to because yeah. I used yes. to visit sometimes periodically. In yes. last few years, it was not so frequent yes. because of COVID. Yes. But yes. things have improved, so whenever I'll be uh, go, going my home, definitely I'll be yes. in touch with Kishaloy and Dr. Sen, might be. So mm -hmm. I'd love to go. And you know that Mar Barashat is my uh, place of origin, actually. My grandparents' house was there in okay. uh, Krishnanagar Road. 
ফিউচার <laughs> আমি they want to do some internship or they want to do phd or something like that okay. they are welcome okay thank you Once thank again. you thank you very much sir okay i would like to ask professor jitendra kumar pande if he have any question sir i think left sir has left right okay okay then there is since there is no more question so i would like to request our hod uh, dr rupam sen to uh, close the session with uh, close the session with his valedictory lecture well uh, thank you very much son sir it was really nice presentation and you explain every slide so nicely it was just like a tutorial classes so uh, really thank you very much and we are very lucky to have you on this platform today and hopefully students who are present here they will be really benefited with your slides I and like. you have explained every reason everything so it was really nice thank you thank you very much and again i will invite you on behalf of your department whenever you come please just uh, inform us we will be very 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 happy if you come to our uh, thank you thank department. you thank you thank you and thank you professor gosar he is always there with us Uh, and every um, seminar and webinar and every event and professor pandey always uh, he also encourage us and also i thank all the participants today thank you thank you everyone thank you thank you thank you thank you okay thank you then i am leaving uh, that is ending the meeting thank you